I don't know if it, my phone just said there's a poor connection, so we'll see if that affects anything. But yes, my name is Brian Abbott. I'm one of the pastors at First Free. Um, been at the church for a while. Uh, it's a it's a blessing. I have the opportunity to oversee a few ministry areas, but uh, one of the things that I'm focusing on now these days is discipleship. Um, really seeing how we can help the church. Um, uh, grow in our ability to love Jesus and really to see how we can help um, one another um, grow uh, in our faith. Um, not only to become disciples, but to become disciples who make disciples. Um, and it's a, it's a joy. In fact, the, the discipleship isn't just something that I do. It's discipleship is something that we all feel really passionate about. Dan o Danny's talked a lot about um, discipleship and making disciples and um, Dan Kerr and I have had lots of discussions along with other staff too as well so discipleship is um, one of those things that feels like it's really um, super important for us to to focus on in fact one of the things that I've uh, tried doing or we've tried doing as a church in the last several months is a discipleship training group which is kind of a response to COVID when we can't meet in a building what do we do? So we created a, an online class, um, actually two of them, and they're called discipleship training groups where we get to go deep into uh, scripture. And uh, one class has been focusing on the question, what is the gospel? Um, uh, very fun uh, class, really trying to narrow in and hone in on what is the gospel. And then uh, in addition to that, what does it mean to be a gospel centered church? Like how do you orient your church around the gospel? Um, had a really fun discussion and with that, that's over. But now we're continuing in the book of Acts and looking at missional principles or ideas of how the church was growing um, as the gospel was being shared throughout the world. Um, in fact, that's kind of where I wanted to spend some time praying today um, and um, talking about some stuff um, because it flows out of my uh, class. Hey, thanks, Robin. Um, we've had an absolute blast. It's just a ton of content, a ton of stuff to reflect on. And uh, one of the things that we've been learning about is how the church grows um, despite opposition and despite um, pushback um, in a lot of different directions. Um, and so um, one of the words that I woke up thinking about today was resilience. Um, I'm not sure why that word specifically popped into my head and my thinking, but resilience seems to be a hallmark um, of the church. And uh, we see it um, in a lot of different places. There's a pattern that we see in the book of Acts where it shows that the church is thriving and they're um, loving on each other. They're seeing great things happen. God is doing something in their midst. They're celebrating. People are coming to faith. But right on the heels of that, there's persecution. And when there's persecution, the church um, experiences um, um, this this a response where and a lot of people have to actually leave one location and go to another location. The missionaries traveling um, were being persecuted. The church was being persecuted and then the church scatters. Um, and so we see that pattern over and over where God's doing great stuff, um, building a church. Um, the uh, disciples are being encouraged. They're growing, but on the heels of that, there's opposition and the church scatters. And so that's what makes me think about the word resilience. I do want to read from um, a quick little chapter before we spend some time praying together. Um, it's from Acts chapter 14. Um, really good. We covered um, a few chapters uh, last or this Monday, this just uh, this week, um, covered 13 and 14. And there's some great stuff. I encourage you guys to read through the book of Acts. Um, but look at Acts 13 and 14 and ask yourself the question, what is God up to um, as he's taken the gospel um, through his people throughout the world? So let me read Acts 14 uh, real quick, small little section, 14, 19 through 23. It says, but the Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city on the next day, and he went in on with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had heard 
or when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and Tyconium and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Um, love, 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 love. Um, that little section. Um, the gist of it is that uh, there are some, there's a group of, of um, opposition um, that's formed against Paul. And in fact, it's so bad that they um, oppose him through violence. And that violence leads to him almost dying. And in this, uh, this section, it's actually kind of interesting. It, it says that he's almost dead. He was dragged out of the city, supposing that he was dead. And the disciples are um, kind of hanging out, standing around. And um, eventually, Paul's able to stand up to his feet. And so kind of as you're listening to the story, you're thinking, well, what what would you do or what what would a normal person do in this situation? You'd probably think they'd get up, probably rest and heal, but never ever go back to that same, that place or location, understanding that, man, they almost took your life. Um, but it says that they preached the gospel in the city and made many disciples, goes on, and it says, return to Lystra, Anticonium, and Antioch. And so Paul and his followers go back to the very place and the location and the region in which they experienced opposition. And here's why. And this is really cool. This is worth pointing out. It says in verse 22, to strengthen the souls of many disciples, encouraging them in the faith. And that word resilience pops back into my mind and into view um, is that the church is resilient. It understands um, her mission. It understands um, what, um, what the church is called to do. Um, and it understands the hope that we have in Christ um, and the need that the, the church has to be encouraged and strengthened. And so I absolutely love this little passage, just thinking about the boldness of Paul and the early disciples when it would have been easy to pick up and leave um, and not go back to that area. But they do. But they do it for the sake of the church that needs to encourage and grow. Resilience is a good word for us, too, because um, we're not unlike the early followers of Jesus who experienced persecution or experienced hardships, or the word that we see here is many tribulations. Um, we're in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of um, a lot of hard stuff in life, and um, the church um, needs to be resilient, and the way it's resilient is by putting its hope in Christ um, and understanding that we are being used in God's uh, mission uh, to take the gospel throughout the world. Um, and in doing so, we get to communicate the love of Jesus and make disciples, um, planting and strengthening uh, churches. And so um, I hope you guys just hearing that feel encouraged um, as we get ready to reopen uh, in the next several weeks. Um, uh, just to think about what it's like to belong to a church. I love that um, right now that we're kind of, we've been forced to rethink about what church looks like and what church means. Um, and so we get to fixate more on the characteristics than the geography or the locations. And some of those characteristics are being a part of a resilient church that's just fixated on Jesus and fixated on making disciples. And no matter what circumstance or situation we're in, we have the opportunity to figure out what that looks like in any given situation. Whether we're enjoying times and moments of, of peace and celebration or moments of persecution and opposition um, and challenges that, uh, that don't allow us to do church the way that um, we normally do. And so the church finds a way to be faithful in the midst of its circumstances. And that's an absolutely uh, beautiful thing. And so I'm so glad that you were able to join us. We're going to pray for a second too. I do want to just note real quick as we enter into some prayer that um, Dad, the reason why Danny's not here is he had um, a dentist appointment this morning. Um, I don't think it was anything uh, big. He just was concerned that he was going to be able to jump back into 
um, the prayer time um, after uh, coming out of his appointment. So he just asked me to step in and fill in for him. And so that's so cool to do that. Um, so thank you for letting me join you guys. And uh, let's just pray. Let's pray that uh, we'll be a church that is resilient. We'll be a church that's um, focused on on Jesus um, and uh, that we'll understand deeply what our mission is. And that is to... Um, glorify God, but also to um, continue to bring the, the good news of Jesus to wherever we're planted, um, whatever circumstance or situation that we're in, um, and that in doing so, we'll make many disciples who will follow Jesus. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for this morning, this opportunity for us to be together. Um, I thank you so much for Pastor Danny um, and for his faithfulness in encouraging us in the word, um, both through Sunday messages, but also through these uh, daily times of, of devotion and prayer. And uh, we just, uh, again, ask that you would encourage him, continue to strengthen him in ministry, Lord, that he might strengthen us, uh, the body of Christ. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to become resilient because it's so easy to, um, to get distracted and unfocused just in life with all the stuff going on it's so easy to take our eyes off you i confess that that's true for me um at times for sure um especially in the last weeks and months and so lord strengthen our hearts and lord um as you provided people to strengthen the early church lord would you continue to provide um, people to, to strengthen us in our lives um, and we are so thankful that even when the church can't meet um, like normal, Lord, that we can reach out to our brothers and sisters and have a phone call or a Zoom call or a driveway conversation or meet together in a home and talk about um, how we're doing. I pray, Lord, that you would give us the boldness and encouragement to, um, to reach out and to share how we're doing spiritually with somebody and that um, others would do likewise, that we might find uh, joy in knowing that um, but we don't go through um, a life of faith on our own, but we are um, surrounded by others who are um, growing in their faith. And most importantly, Lord, we have you that's continuing to guide us. Lord, strengthen us in our mission. Help us to remember, Lord, that we are all about the gospel. In whatever context, wherever we're at, Lord, we are the, um, as the Bible says, we are the aroma of Christ. And so help us to understand that we are a sweet fragrance that, um, that the world needs um, uh, because they need you. And Lord, help us to understand our mission. It's clear, Lord, that we are to make disciples. Um, so Lord, we ask that you would help us to be disciples who make disciples. Um, and so put people into our life, Lord, that we can invest in and help grow. Um, give us the wisdom and the ability to to do that. Above all, Lord, as we walk in, in faithfulness or as we attempt to walk in faithfulness, as we um, thrive and as we stumble, um, Lord, um, in that help us to be resilient, um, Lord. Um, help us um, hold us steadfast in your faithfulness, um, Jesus. And we give this time um, and this, uh, this moment to you, just thanking you for another day that we get to represent you um, here on earth. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray all these things. Guys, uh, thanks everybody for uh, joining us today. It was an absolute delight uh, to do this. I see why Danny thinks this is pretty fun. It's fun to see all you guys popping up on the screen um, and seeing uh, just your fun comments and, and uh, interaction. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day and uh, can't wait to see you guys uh, in the near future. Bye.